Every believer. Amen. I don't care if you're Baptist, I don't care if you're Lutheran, I don't care if you're Methodist or Presbyterian, Congregationalist, Nazarene, I believe that word will preach in any meeting. Whatever the tag is, because it's to all believers. And that I believe it's a really important key for us as a redeemed. So we're going to receive our morning tithes and offerings. If you want to stand on that side, I'll pray. We'll receive it. Make your checks payable to Word and Spirit International Church. Thank you for giving today. And we appreciate that. Let me get the people that are online so they can give too real quick like. Here we go. All right, if you need an envelope, there's some that are available for you, I think, and uh, somebody can get one to you. Those that are just tuning in right now, we've just had a powerful, powerful time of praise and worship and prayer and intercession, laying on hands, ministry one to another. And we're getting ready now to worship with our giving. And we're going to give as unto the Lord. And so we want to say thank you to those that are here. Those of you that are watching, you can give by going to our webpage, which is wordspiritich.com. Wordspirit ich.com and you can hit donate when you do you'll click on that it'll go down to campaign click on that it'll give you about five ways that you can give put in your information hit send it will come to us also those that would like to send it via postal mail that's us mail make it wsic for word spirit international church make it postmark to 1540 erie lane that's e-y-r-i-e lane Eugene, Oregon, 97402. Thank you in advance for your giving. Those of you that are watching, some of you have been so faithful in giving. We love you. We appreciate you. Just pray God's blessing on you. Let's pray and ask God's blessing on everybody's gift today. Father, I thank you for seed. And I thank you that there is seed time and harvest. That as we plant tithes and offerings today, gifts of love, a representation of who we are, Lord, that we're investing into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. May your blessing be upon each and every one that gives this morning, both here, those that are watching by television, those that are watching by the internet, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Facebook, whatever platform, I pray the divine blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, come and come to them. I declare and decree over them, Proverbs 10, 22, That's that the right. Lord maketh one rich, and he addeth no sorrow That's to right. it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. amen and amen. Thank you, guys. Go ahead. You can pass the offering containers. I mean, a rich is more than finances. Rich is every arena of life. I want to be rich in relationships. I want to be rich in health, in vitality, amen. in all the different ways that God has for me to be rich. And so we thank God for the different ways that he blesses us. Grab your Bibles, and we're going to receive, uh, as we're receiving the offering, we're going to turn in our Bibles to today's text which is found in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, I'm continuing. This is the fifth teaching in a series that I began some weeks ago entitled The Believer's Authority. This is number 5. I'll continue next week because we're not going to get done with this passage today. Ephesians 6, beginning at verse 10 through verse number 12. Many of you know that my father was a boxing coach in the town that I grew up in. And so from the time that I can remember five years of age, I left for college. I was in the boxing gym pretty much every night, except as I got older, I was Wednesday, Wednesday nights I'd go to church and was part of the youth group and things like that. So it was Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we'd be boxing on the weekend somewhere. I remember a fight that we had in another town that we traveled there, and I remember my opponent, they match made, in other words, they would go before the coaches would get together, and they'd match according to weight and capability. The better fighters would fight the better fighters. The guys that were up and coming and new to the arena, they would fight lesser fighters in the same way, not as many fights. But I remember that I was fighting this kid across uh, the way from me, and as I came into the ring, I noticed that he was really tall. Now, I wasn't a giant. I'm still not a giant. I'm only five foot, used to be seven. Now I'm like five foot six and a half. Can anybody relate to that shrinking yeah. thing going yeah. on? Gravity sucks. Yeah, that's right. It's called the law of entropy, the second law of thermodynamics. Things, you know, degenerate. They don't get better. But thank God for our resurrected bodies. Amen. Can you send me to that? Amen. So anyway, I remember this guy was taller than I was. And so I got in the ring and my dad says, now listen, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the fight to him. I want you to go straight across. And I want you just to go right at him because you need to take him off guard. So that surprises him. He thinks you're smaller. And so what I did then, Timothy, is when I bell rang, clang, that first round, I went straight across and I went straight at him. 
bam, through a left jab, right cross, hook, I think an uppercut, something like that, and this guy was on the canvas like that, bam. I mean, I just took it to him, and that's the way the fight went the rest of the three rounds. I won by unanimous decision. Why? Because in my mindset, my father told me, ever say my father told him? My father told me to go right after him. Can I tell you something? In the same way, your Holy Spirit, the Father, your Father God, has empowered you with the Holy Spirit to Amen. take it to the enemy, that you're not going to take anything off of him. No lip off the enemy. You need to get a militant Amen. mindset. For whatever yeah. reason, over the last number of years, we've got into a sissified mindset in America. I'm tired of it. Yeah. I mean, they sissified everything. Everything's a bunch of sissies. Give me a break. You know, I mean, everything's a everything's a big deal. We're going to do this. Oh, you're not politically correct, and you're this, and you're that. And uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I think it's time for us to get strong as the body of Christ yeah. and recognize it for what yeah. it is. Yeah. And so right. we need to recognize that we have an authority in our battle. That today's teaching is entitled The Believer's Authority. It's teaching number five, and that's our series, uh, The Believer's Authority. But today's teaching is authority in battle. I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 6. Helen already read the passage out of Ephesians, uh, that Ephesians passage, which is perfect because it's a setup, if you will, for today's teaching. You remember what she said? That we have a revelation, that God would give us a revelation and understanding. He then ascended to the right hand of the Father. He sits, the, you know, the power of God raised him from the dead. He sits at the right hand of the Father and lives to make intercession. You remember all that, right? Well, go back to Ephesians 2. Don't lose your place in Ephesians 6. We'll come back there. But I want you to start in Ephesians 2 now because it's a continuation of that which Helen read, which means that all things have been placed under Jesus' feet, who is the head of the church. And Amen. how many of you know the head has a body? Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, you're the body. Yeah. Look at somebody else and say, you're the body. Yeah. See, we are the body. And that means that if Satan is under Jesus' body, of which you and I are, that means he's under our feet. Right. But we don't act like it. We take too much lip. Yep. And it's time to quit being sissified and become militant in the name and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Now, chapter 2, verse 1. As for you, you were dead, deader than a doornail in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. That's the prince and the power of the air. That's Satan. There's, there's no multiple camps. There's either one camp or the other. Kingdom of darkness, kingdom of light. And it's not yin and yang. And one's not, uh, one's not, it's not equal. I'm going to tell you, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God is much more powerful than the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Don't buy into that lie. Amen. He then says this, all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. I mean, it was our nature. Yep. But did you know you got a new nature? Amen. You, got a, you got a new nature. Amen. But because of His great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Now look at verse 6. This is the underliner. It's the highlighter. It's the one you need to see. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Polish, positionally, right now, every born-again believer is seated in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. That is your position in Him. It's there that you and I need to conduct our life. It's from a position of authority. It's a a position of triumph because Jesus has already defeated the enemy. What we are doing is we're enforcing the victory of Calvary. That which we celebrated some weeks ago, Christ's death, his burial, his resurrection, that means victory for us as believers. We're enforcing that victory here and now in every arena of life that you and I walk in. He then says in verse 7, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. Here's one of my favorite life verses. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us 
to do. That means Amen. from the foundation of the earth, Joshua, God had a plan for your life. It isn't by accident that your parents called you Joshua, which means Savior, which means the same name that Jesus' name is in the Old Testament is yeah. Joshua. It's the yeah. equivalent thereof. That, that on purpose, God wants to use you in this day, in this hour, to advance right. His uh, causes and His purposes. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. And by the way, it's the same for everybody here. Amen. God is no respecter yeah. of persons. Donna and Jean and all of us that are here, He wants to use us for His glory and honor. Amen. Now, go back to Ephesians 6.10. I'm going to look at three verses, 10 through 12. That's our text this morning. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. By way of introduction, rulers of darkness try to rule over believers. Now listen to this. This is my introductory statement. It'll be on the screen. Here it is. Rulers of darkness try to rule over believers who are not walking in the light of their redemption. Remember when Helen said, how wide is that revelation that he may open the heart of the eyes of your understanding so you'll know how wide and long and breadth is the depth of love for us in Christ Jesus. That we have a revelation of who we are. So rulers of darkness try to rule over believers who are not walking in the light of their redemption. Remember what the word says. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Okay? In the light of their redemption are who don't know or don't exercise their rights. Here it is. And privileges in Christ. Their rights and privileges in Christ. If you don't know what they are, then you'll be rolled over like a steamroller. They'll roll right over you. And that's why much of the church is being sissified because they don't know her rights as a redeemed child of God in every arena of life. Amen. Three things that I want to talk about this morning as our authority is in battle. First of all, it's to be strong. It's an admonition. Secondly, it's to put on. And then thirdly, it's our struggle. I'm going to talk about those three things. First of all, point number one, be strong who in the Lord and in his mighty power. So your strength is not in any of yourself. Your strength is in the Lord. The word for strength there, be strong, and the word be strong there is the word dunamis. It's the word that's used in, in the book of Acts, chapter 1 8. You shall receive power. Dunamis, same word. Okay? It's that explosive dynamite power, it's inherent reproductive power. Now, when I was a kid, we used to play with firecrackers. You've probably heard my stories about firecrackers. We'd put them together. We'd multiply them. We'd blow up ant piles. We'd blow up army men. We'd blow up tin cans. Every kind of thing you could imagine. It's just like a kid would do. You know, we'd blow things up. Why? Because it was explosive. It's inherent reproductive power. That is the strength that you have in the Lord. It's the same thing that God spoke to Joshua. If you've been following me on Wednesday nights, you can do that, by the way, by going to our Facebook page called Word and Spirit International Church Facebook page. I do a live teaching from 7 to 7.30 every Wednesday night, no matter where I'm at. Sometimes I'm in another place, another locale, doesn't matter. I do it on Wednesday nights, and I'll do it this Wednesday night as well. But I've been teaching on courage. If you've been following me, I've talked about Joshua, and I've talked about Gideon. Remember, in the book of Joshua, turn there if you would, please don't lose your place here, but go to the very first book of Joshua, chapter 1. Listen to what the word of the Lord says to Joshua, son of Nun, the successor to Moses, who led three million people across the Red Sea, wandered around for 40 years, and God took care of them. It says their shoes did not wear out. It says they always had food on the table. I mean, you know, that's a pretty good thing. I mean, you know, they always had water to drink. It says this in verse 7 to verse number 9. He says this, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you'll be careful to do everything written in it. Then, everybody say then. Yeah. Then you will be prosperous and successful. I don't know about you, but I'll, be pro I'll take prosperity and success. Yeah. God's way. 
Not man's way, but God's way. And then he says this, you'll be prosperous and successful. And then he goes on to say in the text, and have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. It's an affirmation once again. Do not be afraid or do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Also, we find in the book of Judges, chapter 6, verse 12, when the Lord comes in a theophany, an appearance of Christ in the Old Testament, a, pre, a, a pre-incarnate appearance. He appears to Gideon, who's hiding under a tree in the wine press, grinding out grain. And as he's there doing it, the Lord comes and says, Hail thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon says, man, I don't feel very mighty. And our people don't feel very mighty. Have you ever had those days you didn't feel very strong? You felt pretty weak. You felt like you were a whip pup. I mean, I mean, you ever had those days? That is a reality. But I like the fact that here's the key. Our revelation is this. We walk by faith, not by sight. It's in those days that you don't feel like you got the stuff, that you've got to walk by faith. That means to live by faith because you can't do it in your own strength or in your own ability. You will fail if you do. Why? Because you're dependent on your own resources. We've got to be dependent upon God's resources deposited in us and revealed in His Word. Amen. That we can be strong and overcome that which comes against us. You are in a battle. I am in a battle. And you may not like it, but it is reality. Yeah. It is right. the fact that once you came into the kingdom of life, you now became target number one. You were before, but you didn't know it. Now it's even more so of the enemy and the hordes of demons that are a part of his team. Yeah. And so as a result of that, you've got to be strong in the Lord. You've got to be that mighty warrior. It says, in his mighty power, be, be strong in the Lord and put in his mighty power. In the book of Psalms 46, verses 1 through 3, it's talking about strength. Uh, God is my refuge. God is my strength. A very present help in what? Times of trouble. That's the promise that you and I have from Psalms 46, 1. God's our strength. God's our refuge. God's our all in all. It's then that I run to that place, and I'm strong in Him, not in my own strength or my own ability, but it is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Point number one. Point number two, you're going to have to put something on. Look at the text again. It says this now. Here he goes on. In, I'm looking at Ephesians chapter 6. Finally be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Verse 11 now says this. Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Put on what? You're putting on the full armor of God. The Greek word is the panoply. The panoply means the armor of what's called a Roman hoplite. A Roman hoplite was the soldier of the Roman army who went into battle. That every Roman soldier had a certain arsenal of weapons that were used for defense, but then also offense. We'll talk about those more in depth next week. Today we're just going to give you a little light version of this. And so for us you say, well, John, he says, put it on. How do I put it on? I put it on in, in the sense of understanding my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Write down Matthew 6.33. Here's how you put on the full armor of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. When you begin to seek the kingdom of God first, numero uno, in every arena of life, spiritually, relationally, financially, in your job, in your health, in your parenting, in your dealing with people, in your very health, in your recreation, if I'm seeking God in all those things, it's all going to work out. Look at somebody say, it's all going to work out. But you've got to seek first the kingdom of God. Number one. And when, when you don't, that's when things get wonky and go astray. Go with me to Psalms 91. You guys will like this scripture. We hear it quoted often. But this is how you put on the full armor of God. Here's what it says. Psalms 91, verse number one. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High. The King James says, whoever abides under the shadow of the Almighty. Okay? 
What happens? We'll rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. What does a refuge do? When storms come, you go to the refuge place. Do storms ever come in your life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not denying that. See, some people with the mind over matter crowd and the science fiction crowd, I mean the Christian scientist crowd, <laughs> that's a pun. what they want to do is they want to talk it like it doesn't exist. No, there is real stuff that comes our way. That is the reality of living in a fallen world. Stuff that will come at us, attack us, try to come against us, and we have to take our stand against that in the name and the authority of Jesus exercising our authority that's been granted by God because Satan is under our feet. And so he says, I put on this armor when I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. It's like the eagle with her eaglets that come under her wing to find shelter, to find covering. And his faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. Goes on to say, he, you, everybody say me, me. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Anybody ever had night terrors? You don't have to fear those things. Now, my wife was just a little girl, six years of age. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right at the time that she was born again. Interesting how the enemy has a counterattack. Yes. Always. This is a reality. Some people, well, I don't believe that. Well, don't if you don't want, but we live in a fallen world and there's a real supernatural force that's out there that's already against us. But she used to have night dreams and she'd wake up. Isn't it interesting that it happened and coincided with her born-again experience? The enemy would visit in the form of an apparition. And she'd walk out to go to the bathroom down the hallway. She'd see like a burning, a burning shape person or being coming down the hallway. Scared the living wits right out of her. How many of you know God's not given us the spirit of fear, no, no, the power of love, no, and a sound mind? Thank you. It was a demonic apparition is what it was. She'd be laying in her bed. All of a sudden, her bed would levitate and lift off the ground. Yep. It'd just come off the ground. How many of you know that scared the spit right out of somebody? That's called the terror of night. And sometimes kids will go tell their parents, they go, oh, that's nothing, just go to bed. Not realizing it's really taking place and coming against it and their authority as parents until that child comes of age and learns how to defend themselves. Yes, See, we as parents, and all of us have been parents or are been parents or grandparents or whatever, are known parents, we have a responsibility to raise our kids, to watch out for them, look out for their very safety and their no physical harm that would come against them. Is that right? Yeah. We're going to protect that. In the same way, we recognize that as parents, there is a spiritual dimension that comes against your kids. You've got to guard them. Yes. Yep. That's why with our kids, we'd pray over them at night. Every night, we'd go to bed. Lord bless John Mark. Lord bless Matthew. Keep their thoughts pure. Help them to have good thoughts and good dreams. Lord, watch over them. We bless them and pray over them. And we'd say this all the time, because I'd speak it to when Helen was pregnant with her belly. I'd speak to her womb. I'd prophesy over her womb. Lord, thank you that John, Mark, and Matt are growing up to be young men of God who love Jesus, who marry godly women, who have godly kids. Can I tell you that's exactly right? Why? Because I prophesy. I speak it. I decree it. I declare it over my kids. I want them to hear it. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There are some things you've got to speak out loud that's got to go into the Ear gate that causes faith to rise yeah. to believe what destiny is. Yeah. So many kids have so much junk spoken over them, it's got to be reprogrammed to the Word of God. So I thank God that right now my son and daughter in law are upstairs working with our kids to the glory of God. I give you praise, Jesus. So it's putting on. That full armor of God. Just like this psalm says. Let me continue on. He says, Nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand. But it will not come near you. COVID, COVID can come at you. But it ain't touching you. Nope. Hallelujah. Nope. Listen, I, I've walked through this thing. Helen, I got back from... We'd, we'd, we'd gone to Africa. Our last major trip was to Africa. To Nigeria. Right when the whole COVID thing turned... And, Last year at the end of January, 1st of February, we were in Nigeria. And they were all nervous and all worried and scared and everything else. And I bought some masks and I wore them through the airports. But I noticed nobody was wearing masks 
internationally. There was nobody wearing masks. We came back, and man, our government shut everything down. Everybody went into pa panic mode. Now, I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not opposed to being cautious and careful, exactly. but I mean, there is some stuff that has just gone to ultimate That's extreme. Right. That's right. Thank you. That has put a fear in America, not only in America, but in the world. It breeds fear, and fear reproduces fear. I'm not saying if you have a compromised immune system, be aware and take precautions and all that. But there's just some stuff that is flat out nonsense. Nonsense and lies. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand are in, but it will not come near you. You'll only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge yeah. and make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. Why is that? Why is that? Because he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. You know you have angels on assignment that have come to help you and assist you, to protect you and watch out for you. They're here today. Hey, I may not see them, but I know they're there. They're all around us. Hallelujah. Come on up here. We got to see people. Got to see you. No, they got to see. Get up here. God has not given you the spirit of fear. Yeah. So it might be permeating the country. Yeah. Yes. But you don't have to take it. No. Good work. For those that are watching by Facebook and YouTube, that is my wife who has permission at any time I speak to break in and interrupt me. She raised her hand. True. She still has permission. And she, she, she affirms what I said. God's not giving us a spirit of fear. That's maybe permeating the land, but you don't have to buy into that fear. You don't have to buy into that fear. Thank you, Helen. I received that. I appreciate that. Yes. Amen. Yeah, Amen. I received that. All right, so here, here we go on. He says, No harm will take you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You'll tread upon the lion and the cobra. They are metaphors. They're metaphors. That doesn't mean run out and try to take on a lion. No, no. And it doesn't mean run out and try to grab a snake, especially a cobra. I hate cobras. I remember the first time I was in India. We were out, and I ministered. I, it was wild. It was wild. We were way up in the north. Where it was, they called it Chicken's Throat by the Himalayan Mountains in a place called Siliguri, India. We flew in. Boom, right in. Usher straight in the meeting. I'm preaching full on. I love that, though. I, that's, my, that's my gig, man. I'm like, let's just go. Let's do it. Yeah. Preaching morning, noon, and night. I was preaching like crazy. Had a demonized girl that uh, she was on the front row, and I walked right up to her and challenged her. Sometimes the Lord will give you a Holy Ghost anointing yeah. to do certain things. Yeah. And nothing manifested, but later that night she tried to jump off the roof and was running around crazy. And the, the leader, apostolic leader, had to grab her and was casting demons out of her. And I mean, it was awesome. Elephants running around the property, wild elephants and stampeding things. And I was out chasing elephants with them, trying to get them out of the gardens. And yeah, that's crazy. I got I tried to get it on video, but it never really turned out good. But it was awesome. I just loved it. Now, so I preached that night. It was a Friday, Saturday, <clears throat> Sunday morning I preached. Uh, we went to, that's a whole other story where we went, we was going to go somewhere to Mount, that didn't work out. But Monday, the apostle declared a fast day. He says, we're going to go out into this, we're going to walk out towards the village. We're going to go out into this piece of property and we're going to fast and pray. And so as we're on the way there, then they told me, but you got to watch out because there's cobras out here. <laughs> oh man, I don't like cobras. I hate cobras. No. I hate any kind of a snake, let alone a cobra. I didn't like garter snakes, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm serious. So that's like, so I'm out there and I'm not doing, I'm, I'm, I'm watching and praying. My eyes are fully open and I'm watching every rock, every stick, every yep. branch. Yep. Sunil, I'm looking, did they, have, did they have cobras where you were at? I'm looking around, man. You guys are crazy. That's, that's, I'm not into cobras anyway. So he says the line of the cobra, it's, it's indicative or metaphorically of the enemy. Yes. Exactly. It's what it's a, it's a metaphor of. Okay, and I'll I'll give you the end of that when I get back to well yeah Luke ten nineteen I'll get to that at the end of my message how's that he then says this because he loves me says the Lord I will rescue him I will protect him for he acknowledges my name he will call on me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver and honor him I love this verse sixteen with long life I will satisfy him 
and show him my salvation. That's what I believe for. I believe for a long life. David says a man's year shall be 70 or 80. And if you go back to Genesis 6, it's 120. So Thank any you. place after uh, between 70 and 120, praise God. Why not go for the gusto and live in full health in the process? Put on the full armor of God. Why? So you can take your stand against the devil's schemes, the enemy's schemes. That means his tactics. That means his devices, his temptation to get you to sin, to get you to doubt, to get you to worry, to get you to move in fear, and to live by your feelings, to live without direction. Remember the uh, scripture I read out of Ephesians 6.10, your God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance. That, might, that means this, you have a purpose for your life. It's up to you to find out what that is. And usually it's an alignment with your gifts, talents, and ability. Amen. That God will connect you with those things. Do you know me going to the nations and preaching the nations has happened since I was saved and called at five years of age. That's how long that's been in my heart. That's why I do that. I'm living out the divine purpose for my life. Preaching this uncompromised gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, seeing the sick healed, the demonized delivered, proclaiming the goodness of God and the provision of God. Why? Because when I was five, I heard the voice of the Lord speak to me to go preach this gospel. Amen. You and I all, and I'm not reached the pinnacle of that which God has called me to do or fulfill. In the same way, you may not be called to do that, but you may be called to something very specific. Don't die with the potential that has been placed on the inside of you, Amen. not released and Amen. fulfilled. Amen. Taking your stand against the enemy's schemes who will distract you from your purpose, yep, yeah, yeah. tempt you with sin. You know, as you read the Old Testament, and as you study that Old Testament, especially in the book of Kings, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles. Anybody ever read those books? Oh, yeah. It's all about the kings of Israel. Okay? It talks about the kings of Judah, the kings of Israel. First of all, the, the, the unified kingdom with, uh, with uh, Saul and David. Then it talks about the divided kingdom, Israel, and uh, Judah. And then it goes to Israel with the ten nations to the north, two nations to the south. Okay, That's twelve total, right? And it talks about those. Do you know that when you study that, out of all the kings of the nation of Israel... Only a handful finished well. That's right. Many of them fell, led their nation into apostasy, led it into idolatrous worship, and led them off a precipice of crazy idolatry and false worship. And they bore the consequence of it. That's why we pray for kings and those in authority over us. The Bible says in the book of Timothy. Exactly. That we may live godly and peaceable lives. Why? God's not wanting that any should perish, but all would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's the heart of God. Yeah. So everybody say, put on, put on the full armor of God. Here's the reason why. So that you can take your stand against the devil's tactics. His schemes. I grew up in the era of the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner Hour. Okay. And part of that was Wiley E. Coyote and also the Roadrunner. That's right. And Wiley E. Coyote always had these tactics, these schemes. Acme rockets, Acme bombs, Acme rocks, Acme oh, yeah. tun tunnels, all yeah. that Acme, Acme. You know what I'm talking about? Trying to wipe out the Roadrunner. But the Roadrunner would bzz, 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 beep, beep, beep. Yeah, he'd run through it. He'd, he'd just overcome. You and I, because of Christ in us, the hope of glory, we just need to overcome in Jesus' name by putting on the full armor of God. All right, that's number two. Point number one, be strong. Point number two, put on. And then number three, our struggle. Go back here to Ephesians chapter 6. Look at verse number 12. For our struggle, the Greek word there is gunatso, literally means our wrestling match. Our wrestling match is not against flesh and blood. Literally in the Greek, it's blood and flesh. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We call that the four levels or hierarchy of the unseen realm. Everything the enemy has is a ripoff. Oh, yeah. He's only taken that which God has ordained 
created, started, yep. Yep. and he hijacks it and he corrupts it. That's right. So there's a hierarchy in the angelic realm. That's correct. There really is. There's a hierarchy in the angelic realm. We talk about we talk about archangels. We talk about cherubim. We talk about seraphim. Yep. We talk about the common angels that have been assigned to children, or then really us, because they grow up with us as we grow up. I believe we have an angel assigned to us for our entire life. And by the way, they don't bam and once you go to heaven. They're probably there helping on assignment, would be my, my sense. But my point is this. There's a hierarchy of angels in the angelic realm. In the same way, there's a hierarchy in the demonic realm. And so what we see here is a fleshing out of this hierarchy. Our fight, he says, our wrestling match is not against flesh and blood. It's not against fellow human beings. It may seem like it at times yeah. because the stuff that's coming is through an individual. But really in reality is that that individual is like a puppet. Yeah. Uh -huh. You remember the marionettes with the strings? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. And the puppets. Anybody ever have a hand puppet? Now if you've ever been in Sunday school, you've had puppets. Yeah. Anybody been in Sunday school and had puppets? You yeah. saw a puppet show or you did a puppet show? Let me see yeah. your hands, okay? Yeah. All right. Maybe. They're, they're for an object lesson. They're helping to teach a truth is what they are. And so I remember David and Goliath in a puppet show. I remember uh, Gideon, you know, in, in the, the 300 guys in their lap and water. I remember all these different puppet shows. I remember watching flannel graph boards before there were computers, projection screens, projection TV, and all of that that we do now. The technology is phenomenal. I'm for technology. I'm not against it. Let's just use it for the kingdom of God. Hello. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I remember all those things, and they stay on the inside of me. I've not forgotten them. But as, as we fight, we recognize that that fellow human being is not who we're fighting against. It is the spirit that may be manipulating that person or that industry or whatever it is behind the scenes. Now, can you imagine why the enemy would want to somehow influence world leaders? Absolutely. Yeah. All over the world. Hello. To accomplish his diabolical plans and purposes through leaders. That's why we need godly leaders. Yeah. Thank you. You know what? If, if As that leader goes, so the nation goes. Yep. Right. So we need to say, like the psalmist said, Lord, turn the heart of the king like a water course. You've got to influence them. On decisions that are being made. That's what we pray. That's right. Why? Because our struggle is not against flesh and blood, although it may seem like it at times. It's really the unseen force behind that. It's against four levels. First of all, it's against rulers. These are top level cosmic rulers. They're like pulling the shot, they're calling the shots. How many of you know in any industry you have different levels of employees and then managers and then right on up the line? Well, these are the guys that are calling the shots. They're giving the directives to the lesser demons to do what they do. And so that's what they're like. Then there's the authority against authorities. These are the general level. These are what we call ground level demonic entities. These are the kind that infest people. These are the kind that were cast out of the Gadarene demoniac. Even though there were 6,000. Remember when it says, what's your name? You're, remember Jesus asked him, what's your name? Because my name is Legion. Legion, Legion means 6,000 Roman soldiers. That's what it means. I mean, that's a lot of demons in one person. Oh, yeah. No wonder the guy couldn't stay in town anymore because he was crazed out of his mind. Yeah. The Bible says they would chain him. He'd break the chains. They couldn't hold him with chains. Yeah. Not only that, but he was living out of the tombs where the dead people were buried himself. out. Yeah. yeah, he cut himself. Naked on top of it all. I mean, how do you know that's a crazy person? You see somebody cutting themselves, yelling, screaming, saliva coming up, and they're naked as a jaybird. I mean, that's that's like, ooh, scary stuff. Yeah. Stay away from that person. Yeah. And then you try to control them, and they break chains. How do you know there's still people like that today? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. They need deliverance. <laughs> they need deliverance. Okay, They're infesting people. How do you know, by the way, there are people that, uh, I'm, I'm for, let me just say this, I'm for reaching people of all classes. Amen, yep. Amen brother. Sometimes the church is only for the down and outer. Now, I'm not opposed to that, but how do you know the up and outers need Jesus too? Yeah, thank you. Why? Because they're the influencers. Yeah. How do you know we, it would be awesome for Tesla to be born again? 
a brilliant mind on fire for the purposes of God. Amen. How many know it would be good for Jeff Bezos, the, the founder and the owner of Amazon and multiple other things, to be born again? Yeah. Yeah. We need some billionaires. How do you know it would, it would be good for him to be born again? Bill Gates, who needs to be radically born again, probably delivered. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? We need some of these world leaders to be born again, filled with the Spirit. Because of the influence factor. How many people they influence? That's why we all have to be effective in our spheres of influence. Who's the wizard of, of Omaha? What's his name? Uh, lives in Omaha? Huh? Warren Buffett. That's right, Warren Buffett. Yeah, he's like in the. I think he's like six now in the billionaire category. Yeah. Um, number one is is who's is just they just shifted. It's between Bezos and Tesla. They're like back. What's not Tesla? Musk. What's his Elon Musk? Thank yeah. you, yeah. Elon. So they're like back and forth. One's like one seventy five billion or one seventy one billion. Those are like one fifty one billion. Those are the top two billionaires in the world. In fact, most of the billionaires are in America. How do you know they could they could use a dose of Jesus and the Holy Spirit? Amen. Yeah. So then we have authority against powers. These are, these are geographical level demonic entities that govern geographical areas. And so they're over areas. And you can see certain sins in certain areas. Years ago, there was a man by the name of Ed Silvosa from Argentina. And he began to do what's called spiritual mapping. And what he did is he recognized that, that when they begin to intercede and pray, when they begin to recognize the different levels of demonic beings, that they could have more influence when they understood the effects of those demonic beings and hierarchy and would come against them in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And so they would recognize the certain spirits over certain areas. And they would come against them in the name of the authority of Jesus Christ. And then the gospel was preached. In fact, in Argentina... I mean, they had a great move of God because they put this concept into motion of prayer and intercession. And some of the world's largest churches for a long period of time were in Argentina. Of course, Yangi Cho was the largest uh, for a long period of time with over, I think, a million people. It's like 800,000 people. That's in one church. Okay, 800,000 in one church. We only have 4 million in all of Oregon. Now, the state I grew up in, South Dakota, I think they maybe have a million people in the whole, t the whole state. So, I mean, there are some states that are smaller, some states that are larger. And that's why you have these political powerhouses in major metropolitan areas because there's LA. so many people. Yeah. Los Angeles, Seattle. New York. Yeah, Seattle. So you look all these different power centers. I know there are geographical spirits that are assigned over those areas. Look at the stuff that takes place. How? Nah, I'm not going to go down that road. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right, let's 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 deal with this last one because I, I need to wrap this up. Then there's finally authority. Authority against rulers, authority against authorities, authority against powers, and authority against spiritual forces of evil in the what? Heavenly realms. Do you remember when the Apostle Paul was writing the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12? In verse 1, he says, I know a man, whether in the spirit or in the body. I'm not sure went into the third heaven, not just heaven, into the third heaven, heard and saw things that were inexpressible. Okay? He says, heard things that were inexpressible, things that should maybe not even be told because they were so magnificent. So you know, was I in the body or was I out of the body? I don't know, but I, I went there. I was there. I was in the spirit. In the body or out of the body? He says, I don't know, but I was caught up to the third heaven. That implies a couple of things. That means there is a third heaven, there must be a first heaven, there must be a second heaven. Is that right? Most theologians believe the second heaven is the realm of the demonic hordes that live in that realm. And so what ends up happening is that there is this warfare, a cosmic warfare that goes on. Let me give you an illustration as I start winding this down. In the book of Daniel... Daniel is praying and he's interceding for the nation of Israel. Yep. And as he's praying for them, it says that he cries out, and then finally Michael shows up. Okay? Actually, excuse me, Gabriel shows up because Gabriel yeah, speaks. Yeah. He's, the, he's the messenger angel. Right. Gabriel shows up and he says, Listen, man, 21 days ago, your prayer was heard in heaven. Yes. Wow. 
But for 21 days, it says that the answer was sent. For 21 days, we've been battling. In fact, Michael had to join me in the battle. That's why they call Michael the warring spirit. Michael had to battle. We had to come down and battle for 21 days to get the answer back to you. It's not that their prayer was not heard, but there was this whole foggy stuff that's in between. There was warfare taking place in order for that answer to come back to you. There's a cosmic struggle. So let me tell you something. That didn't stop happening. It's still happening today. That's why don't give up on your dreams, plans, visions, goals, that which God has spoken to you, that which God had, which you have prayed, because the answer is on the way. Though it may be in delay, there is some warfare going on, and that thing is going to be released, and that God's plan and purpose, if you'll still faithful, and you'll stay true to God's assignment, plan and purpose for your life, it will get to you, and you will accomplish that which you need to accomplish to the glory of God. Philippians 1.6, that he who began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That means until I go to heaven and be with him by death, or he comes for me in the second coming, I'm telling you what, I'm going to prevail, and God's plan and purpose will prevail as well. Hallelujah. So we have authority. Say, I have authority. Against rulers. Against authorities. Against powers. Against spiritual forces of evil. Because of Jesus Christ. In me, the hope of glory. Somebody stand up and give the Lord a hand clap and praise. The only way we can have confidence in our authority over the enemy is, to this conclusion, is to know and walk in the light of the written word of God. Remember, remember when we were in Psalms 91? I says, I'll appeal to this at the end of my message about the lion and the cobra being a metaphor for the enemy. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power, the actual word is authority, to tread upon snakes and scorpions, metaphor of the demonic realm again, you know, and overcome, because in context, and overcome all, everybody say all, all, the power of the enemy. All the power of the enemy. That's the word of Jesus to us. Now I know this, Jesus didn't lie. No. So when fear and temptation and trial and test and doubt and worry and the desire to want to live by my feelings creeps in, i got to say no. I'm not going to allow that to happen. I will take my stand and I will walk in the victory that's mine in Jesus Christ. Why? Because I am more than a conqueror, according to Romans 8.37. Yes, so conqueror is the Greek word Nike, Nikeo. The word Nike comes from that very word. Yep. Hallelujah. You're a Nike, did you know that? You're a conqueror. You're a conqueror. Let's stand up.